Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, and I'm here to give you a rant of the day. This one is passionate to me because this is the nonstop dribble I've been hearing from these ESPN, WNBA commentators, and I use that word loosely because they're not commentators, they're not pundits, they're literally agenda carriers. That's all they are. They just keep carrying an agenda that they want to keep pushing. There's a narrative that they want to push, and the narrative is complete and utter bogus garbage. But before we jump in, I want to say thank you again for subscribing and following us, and um, keep keep subscribing, keep following, keep pushing it, pushing us on YouTube, pushing us on Instagram, push us on. TikTok, Facebook, all of it, man. We appreciate you a great deal. Remember to ring that bell so you know when we have new content dropping. Let's jump right in. Stephen A. Smith and Drea Carter had a back and forth yesterday in reference to Arike Agumbawale not making the Team USA because she actually pulled her name out of the out of the pool because she knew that the team was predetermined. She knew that she had no chance to make the team, despite the fact that she's the best shooting guard in the best shooting guard in the WNBA. People like Drea Carter have been pushing a narrative. Chinia Gumake, Carolyn Peck, Monica McNutt. They pushed this narrative. Molly Curum on first take. They've pushed a narrative that The 12 women on Team USA are the best players in the world. That's what they pushed. They didn't push a narrative of best fit. They pushed that they were the best 12 in the world. They came up with different reasons why certain players were left off. They talked about a training camp that Team USA had done for a period of time and said, you had to have been there to have made the team. Yet, there's two players that are on the team that were not at the workout that they claimed that Caitlin Clark needed to attend in order to have a chance to make the team in April when she was getting ready for the final four. Chelsea Gray wasn't there. Brittany Griner wasn't there. But they made the team. That roster, as constructed, has four members of the Las Vegas Aces. Four. That's of 12 players, 33.3333333333. One third of that team is from one WNBA franchise. The other players, Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Ionescu, Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, Kalia Cooper, Kalia Copper. So you have three players. So seven of the 12 players come from two franchises. And they're going to sit here and tell you that these are the 12 best players in the world. They they wanted to put this spin on it. That we needed to have the people that played together and know how to play together. Blah, 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 blah. Everything done to discredit other players who are better and more deserving. And we just saw this past weekend in the WNBA All-Star Game, two guards who are better and more deserving. Arike Agumbawale went for 34 points in being named MVP of the WNBA All-Star Game. She dominated the game. Caitlin Clark dished 10 assists. And probably could have had more had she gone back in the game when she was going to be put back in the game. Instead, she said, no, let Erika keep cooking. The reality is that there are better players who are not on Team USA. And the narrative that was spun a month ago, a month and a half ago, whenever the heck that decision was made to select the players... It's not the narrative anymore. What's new? Take a look at what Drea Carter said to Stephen A. Smith just yesterday. 
Arike is spot on. I, I truly think that there are always politics involved when you're putting together a team. Whether that works in some players' favor or it works against some players, sometimes it comes down to fit. Whether that is based on... Hold on, fit. Let's talk about fit. What are we talking about? Fit? You're telling me that the most prolific shooting guard in the WNBA does not fit Team USA? Isn't the job of a basketball player to make baskets? To hit shots? To be elusive? To be hard to guard? Isn't that what the sport of basketball is about? If Team USA fits so well together, why'd they lose on Saturday? No, pardon me. Why'd they get their asses kicked on Saturday? Because they got their asses kicked. If they're such a fit, why'd they get their asses kicked? If the Team WNBA managed them to do it in one practice, one practice is all it took to team, team WNBA. You know what great players do? Great players find a way to fit. The best in the world find a way to fit. It's one of the most frustrating things involving the, the men's Team USA is that as great as they are, they don't focus on, on team ball. They focus on iso ball, on me, 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 me. What I respect about the WNBA and I respect about the players in the league is that they don't focus on me, 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 me. They don't focus on iso ball. One, because most players in the WNBA don't, can't iso anybody. Most of them don't have the skills or the quickness to truly get play iso ball. So you have a much better team concept, which I actually appreciate. But Arike Agumbawale is a special talent. And she's a talent that can ISO. She's a, she's a talent that can truly create her own shot without screens. Hand her the ball, she can create her own shot because she's just that good. Let's keep playing. Whether that is based on your personality, whether that's based on if they think the coach is going to get along with you, whatever they're basing this on. Personality and the coach getting along with you. Oh, my God. If a coach can't get along with a, an all-star player, we need to find a new coach. Find a new coach. It's literally the job of the coach to make it work. All-stars don't get shipped around because they're needed to win. You're telling me that Cheryl Reeve cannot handle Arike Agumbawale? I mean, we already know that she has that old school mentality and she's she's cut from that old cloth and she doesn't want to, you know, she had an issue with Caitlin Clark until Caitlin Clark kicked her ass on her home floor and had a full sellout crowd at the Target Center. And then realize, oh, yeah, you know, we should be taking advantage of this. But yet, when we have a chance to take advantage of this on a world stage, the Olympics, uh, she doesn't fit. She doesn't fit. The most pass-first guard in the league doesn't fit, personality-wise. Arike Gumboale, the best scoring guard in the league, doesn't fit. Let's keep going. Sometimes it doesn't come down to who are the best X's and O basketball players out there on the court. Team chemistry gets involved. So politics. Team chemistry. Oh, boy. The team chemistry here. Really? Dre, did you watch the game on Saturday? Did you watch the game? The Olympic team is supposed to have team chemistry, right? Because they supposedly have been playing together for years. It's funny how Team Chemistry got Team Chemistry's ass kicked on Saturday. Politics get involved, but we see this in every sport. I've talked to some of my friends in the NBA. I've talked to some of my friends in Nobody the cares NFL. about who you've talked, talked to the NBA. Politics within their organization. Go look right now at the, at the M Team USA. The Team USA has literally 11 of the top 25 players in the, in the world on it. They have literally, literally 11 of the top 25 players in the world on it. And the last time they went out, the last year when they went out with not the top 25 guys, they got the shit kicked out of them. They got the absolute shit kicked out of them because ISO ball does not win 
in freaking Olympic and international play. ISO ball does not win. Team ball wins. And that's why these teams are giving the Team USA men's squad trouble right now because they play too much goddamn ISO ball. But in women's basketball, you don't play ISO ball. It's team ball. But you still are very bene- – you're benefited a great deal by having someone like Ogumbawale who can ISO people when you need it. It won't be on every possession. It won't be every possession. She just doesn't – she's like all over the place. But we we'll keep going. Organization. There are politics in every organization. It's unfortunate for Arike, but Arike is not the first player that has felt like she's been left off of Team USA. Becky Hammond in 2008. Nobody Becky cares. Becky Hammond was second Move in on. MVP voting in cares. 2007. Becky Hammond wasn't on that 2008 team. Candace Parker has been left off of Who teams. Who cares? Neka Gumake Who has cares? been left off of teams. These are incredibly talented legendary players that mm-hmm. have been left off of teams. Nobody USA. cares. So sometimes politics comes into play. I think Arike understands. What po- what politics kept Candace Parker out of the Olympic team? I don't even know. Because she knows she hasn't said why. She just mentioned players who got left off. She didn't say when they got left off. I don't know what year Kenneth Parker got left off. The reality is players have to want to compete in the Olympics. They have to want to compete in Team USA. They have to want to do it. There's a reason that the men have a new team all the time because these guys don't want to do it. It's their summer vacation. And the difference with the women is it's happening during their season. So... They don't they're not so much as inclined to say no because it's just regular season basketball for them. But the men turn this shit down constantly because they want to go on vacation. Understand. All right. That's one. Let's jump into Stephen A's response to this crap. I just want to make sure I'm clear, Andrea Carter. It's good to see you, by the way. Uh Uh When we talk about politics, right, what we're basically saying, the things that are not related to basketball itself, Mm -hmm. other ancillary things on the outside. I'll jump right in. A month ago, Stephen A. Smith had these ladies on his show, um, Drea Carter and and Cheney and McNutt. And I know McNutt wasn't on this particular episode, but Shannon Sharp was there. And he told them about marketing. He explained to them marketing because they clearly don't understand marketing very, very well. And, and which will make me jump back to it because I'm going to go to that clip as well because I have that clip also. But this is, this is an example of how he just absolutely eviscerates her ass because all of the things that she said before are no longer applicable. Now it's politics. The most, most obvious politi- politics, political reason for Caitlin Clark to have been put on Team USA, specifically Caitlin Clark, Even Angel Reese, but specifically Clayton Clark, is money and making bread and marketing your product. Because if you don't market your product, no one's going to watch the damn thing. Did you happen to see how many people watched the WNBA All-Star Game on Saturday? 3.44 million. It did 400 plus percent better than last year. 400 percent. Last year, 850,000. This year, 3.44 million. You think that's an accident? That's one player changing the entire spectrum of your freaking game as a league. This is what we're talking about. But nevertheless, that, fuck the marketing. Caitlin Clark is the best point guard in the WNBA. Have you not been paying attention? And Enrique Agumbawale is the best shooting guard in the WNBA. Have you not been paying attention? And when you put those two women together, what did they do? They beat the shit out of Team USA. Let's keep going. On the outside that contribute to formulating a roster, are you saying here over the national airwaves that that actually happens, that that happens all the time? It does. Yes. Okay. Sometimes it works uh, in players' favors. Hold on, sometimes hold on. it doesn't. That's what I heard I'm you. I heard you. I heard you. I'm going someplace. So why was it a problem when I pointed out uh, don't how do that. Caitlin Clark on vacation. should have been on Team USA because I was saying it ain't about basketball. It's about marketing. It's about I politics. 
I'm saying, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm saying, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not saying you're refuting anything. I don't even want to hear Molly Kerm open her mouth. She has no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And Drea Carter now is stuttering over herself because she has no response to this garbage because she knows she's been caught. She knows but she's been caught in her own bullshit. Anything like that. I'm simply making the point that there was there was a tsunami of stuff coming my way. Why? You because it. I had the Shut up, Molly. He didn't deserve you crap. He was factual. All. Excuse me? You deserved it all. Molly, he was factual. Can I, can I speak to Andre? Yeah. Can I speak to Andre right now? Don't interrupt the flow. Don't interrupt the Sorry. flow. He was um, factual. Andrea, I mean, what I'm saying is, I was talking to y'all, and I said, we know that the players that are on the team deserve to be on the team. But when we talk about popularity, when we talk about marketing, when we talk about the politics of the business of that. Fuck all that, man. Fuck all that. This isn't even about politics and marketing. This is about being the best player. This is the best player. And a month ago, they were saying she wasn't. A month ago, she was not physical enough. A month ago, she couldn't handle the international game. Yet, she can handle the WNBA game. Yet she just broke the damn WNBA record for assists in a game. Yet she leads the fucking league in assists right now. The entire league. Not just rookies. The league. And that number is just going to keep blowing the fuck up. Are you kidding me? Business of basketball. This is why you get somebody like Caitlin Clark and you make her a representative of Team USA. I'm not even saying that you're conceding my point is right about Caitlin Clark. I'm making the point. That's what I was saying. It wasn't a basketball argument. It was saying this happens all the time. So why was everybody, you know, about to lose it and fall off their rocker? Because I basically said what you just acknowledged over now. Remember what she just said. She said politics, right? She said politics. The political thing to do would have been to put Caitlin Clark on this team when they didn't do it a month and a half ago, a month, month and a half ago. That would have been the political thing to do. So now she's talking about how politics determined that Arika Agumboale didn't make the team, yet the politics should have put Caitlin Clark on the team, right? She's all over the place. Now she's just like she's running for the hills because she's wrong and she can't just come out here and say, I'm wrong. Caitlin Clark got screwed. Arika Ngumawale got screwed. And we don't have the best players that are going to play in this game. We don't have the best team. We don't have the best team chemistry. Because the team chemistry that you claim that you had between seven fucking teammates does not actually exist. Because if you look at their scoring and who did what, Rihanna Stewart and Asia Wilson were half the scoring for the entire team. Half the damn scoring. But we can jump into this next clip from Drea. Her next response to this absolute apologize. That's the wrong one. This is it. Sorry, that was the wrong one. Too smart for for everything that you just said because you know politics are a piece of the pie. If constructing a team is a cake, if we're baking something, yeah. politics is just one ingredient. Yeah. Your X's and O's, your skill set. All right, your X's and O's and your skill set. Okay, I'm glad you went there. Your X's and O's and your skill set. Have you been watching Caitlin Clark play? When you made your comments, you utilized bullshit like physicality. Have you been watching this woman play? Your skill set and your X's and O's. If there's one thing that Caitlin Clark knows better than anyone in this damn league, it's X's and O's. She's able to hit passes that no one else can hit. She's able to do back doors and, and, and pocket passes better than anyone in the league. And you're sitting here talking about X's and O's and, and, and skill set. So politics would have been in Caitlin Clark's favor. Skill set should have been in her favor. X's and O's should have been in her favor. So let's keep going and listen to your crap. How right? you've proven yourself on the professional right. level. Oh, okay. How you've proven yourself on the professional level. At the time they made this decision, Chelsea Gray had not played a game this season. At the time they made this decision, Caitlin Clark was the leading scorer and leading assist for rookies in the league. And she still is today. How has she proven herself? How has she proven herself? She hasn't? She's proven herself. She was proving herself a month ago when you said she hadn't proven herself. 
you think I give a shit about Diana Taurasi's feelings if she's left off, or, or, or Chelsea Grace's feelings if she's left off, or Jackie Young's feelings if she's left off? I mean, who cares? Kelsey Plum's feelings if she's left off? Those three players are not even the best player on their own team. When you have four players from one squad, three of them are not the number one option on their own squad. So everything that they get is much more wide, much more open, because they're not the number one option. When you have three players from a team, everything that the number one option doesn't get, the, the number one option gets, they're far more covered. The other two are not as covered. They're open. They're more open. Let's continue with this garbage. Professional level, okay. the chemistry that they think you're going to have with the chemistry, chemistry again. Yeah. Did she just watch the you WNBA All Star game? Things. Factor in. Oh, I'm factor in. Of putting a player on the team. Right. Come in. Being a so mierda. Listen to this garbage. But if we were going X's and O's, your argument could have been stronger for why Enrique was left. She literally just said that if politics was better for Caitlyn, but X's and O's wasn't. She's not watching basketball. This is why she's keeping this fucking ridiculous narrative. Because she just likes, just dislikes this girl so damn much. She dislikes her so much. And I'm sitting here saying on record, they should have replaced the entire goddamn team with Team WNBA and sent all of Team USA home and said, sit your ass at home. We're sending the Team WNBA to the Olympics because they're the best team we've got. Because they just busted your ass. And we're up 19 in the fourth quarter and kicked the crap out of you and played more like a team than Team USA did despite having all this flipping bullshit chemistry that she's talking about. Get out of here. And then they'll go into how, oh, well, who would you not have? Any one of them. Outside of Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson, you could replace the whole goddamn team. Maybe Sabrina. Realistically, replace the whole damn team outside of those two players. And you'd be perfectly in your right. This was left off of the team. Absolutely. for marketing, and I get that, but I'm saying it all just comes together. Politics is a piece of the pie. Arike well, acknowledges well, that. Well, well. That politics would have... Arika acknowledged it because she knew she had no choice but to acknowledge it because she could have raised a real stink about it and really come out there and said, you know what, I'm better than all these people. It's a joke. Politics would have worked for Caitlyn. It worked against Arike, but it's just a fraction. Arike. Working... I, I'm just nauseated. This is the clip that I need you to see now in reference to... It's this one right here. A few minutes ago, Caitlyn Clark not making the Olympic yeah. team. This clip is when it was actually announced. Listen to what Drea Carter has to say. This is why you can call Drea Carter on her garbage. Because there's proof. There's receipts of her garbage and the dribble that she spews. The nonstop dribble and how it just, her, her narrative keeps changing. Here we go. Team, despite leading all rookies in points and assists, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, obviously bro bro broken news. I've got to look at the roster to see who they picked to be on the team, but I would imagine they leaned on veterans. So she didn't know who was on the team when she jumped on television here? <laughs> wow, talking about being unprepared. And while Caitlin has had an incredible season, I don't know if there's going to be a rookie on this roster. So we look. Here we go. This is the roster. Chelsea Gray, Kelsey Plum, Sabrina Ionescu, Jackie Young, Jewel Lloyd, Kalia Cooper, Copper. I always say Cooper. Diana Taurasi. Those are the six guards. Jewel Lloyd is completely inefficient. Unless she's playing Indiana, she plays like she shoots, she's 34% shooter. Diana Taurasi's old. Kalia Cooper's, Kalia Copper's good. Sabrina's good. Kelsey is overrated as hell. And Chelsea Gray is completely overrated. And Jackie Young is good. But, sorry. None of those Aces guards are better than Caitlin Clark. None of them. None of those guards are better than Arika Egumbawale. None of them. In fact, I'll tell you right now, Caitlin and Arika are better than all six of these guards. All of them. They just are. They're better than all of them. Let's listen. Remember, Arika Egumbawale is a veteran. She didn't, just, she didn't just show up last week. As we look here, the biggest thing is, and I know the U.S. Women's National Team, they want players that they feel like, again, it's a committee decision, that they feel like can contribute. And the one thing that comes to my mind, while Caitlin has had an incredible season, FIBA rules are a little bit more flexible than WNBA rules when it comes to physicality. The physicality of Olympic basketball, the physicality of FIBA basketball is taken to an entirely new level. Get the fuck out! Like, like, get the fuck out of here! I can't even. Like, you can't even do say this with a straight face. This was a month and a half ago. Month, month and a half ago. 
Caitlin Clark leads the league in assists. The WNBA, the entire league. She just, she's got eight double digit assist games. She just broke the WNBA record in assists for a game with 19. Should have had 25 in that game. She is the best player to have when surrounded by talent. Why? Because Caitlin Clark doesn't need to shoot. She doesn't even, she doesn't even care to shoot. As great as she can at shooting the ball, it doesn't matter to her. She's going to facilitate layups for everybody. In fact, the, the, the one issue that might exist is that she passes too much. But don't sit here about the physicality. Now, so this was a month ago, it's a physicality. Today, it's the politics, the chemistry, the X's and O's, the skill. <laughs> like, what? 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 All over the place. Like, <laughs> the physicality. Oh, Lord have mercy. Level. Just looking at that roster right away, looks like they leaned into veterans and veteran experience. Arika Gumba is a veteran. Comes to scoring, so that's my quick take on it. Yeah, but I've got yeah your quick take is stupid. Yeah, we know that I, I can't even. I can't even take this type of dribble. But just like you said, you know the veterans. You know what you're going to get on. <laughs> let's take a look at this. Look, let's look at this clip now. This is the last clip I'm going to show. This is just another example. This is when Stephen A. went at it with with Drea Carter and the crap that came out of Drea Carter's mouth. She's full of it. Hypocrite. He hypo hypocrite. Hypocrite. Bullcrap. Listen to this. I hear you, Stephen A., but I will not sacrifice my basketball knowledge and my integrity in terms of the game for marketing. My marketing is doing just fine. And if it has to Nobody cares about your marketing, um, Drea. We're talking about the WNBA and Stephen A. Smith was trying to educate you for yourself professionally. You think your marketing is so great. No one, knew who the, no one knew who the freaking hell you were until Caitlin Clark came in to play basketball. You were completely irrelevant. You've had a job at ESPN for two years. Miss me with the bull crap. Miss me with the bull crap. You're on an initial contract with them. You, I don't know what you're getting paid, and I don't really care, but I know it's not as much as you want to make us believe. It's not. Your integrity of your knowledge of basketball. You know what? You've already sacrificed your integrity when you said that Caitlin Clark couldn't compete physically with these women, which is the same bullshit narrative you've fucking been running with the whole season. And now it's not that she can't compete, it's that the chemistry is a problem. Or the and this is the same for Gumbo Wale. The chemistry is an issue, or the X's and O's, or the skill, or all these different reasons separate of what the actual true reason is. The true reason, which we will get to in a sec. Team Bro, USA has slower to hold on. Team USA has. You have, they, that's they, they, we've had ample the basketball this way they've done it in the past. Yes. Excuse me. Maybe, they, I just and maybe they're, they're not time. trying to do it this year. Stephen, I, I, I understand this, Andrea, that. Andrea, I understand Andrea. that. And, All right. What's the real reason? Let's let's just keep up. Keep it. I, I'll take it from Ben, ben uh, a podcast I watch. Oh damn! My my chair has been a lot of whack this week. I gotta I gotta get a new chair. The reality is the old guard doesn't want to let go. They have a problem with the the straight white girl. They don't like her. I don't know what the problem is with the Goomba Wale. Really, I don't. I have no idea why they'd have a problem with her. Um, I don't know. With the Goomba Wale, I don't know. Maybe they're afraid that she's a she's a she's a she's a, a, a volume shooter. But even so, like when she's surrounded by talented players, her volume shooting though is hitting scoring at a fifty percent rate. She's she shoots a lower percentage in the league because she's being guarded like crazy, and she's a really good play, she's a good player, but she's better than what's on that team. But with Caitlin Clark, this is a, this is just a, this is the nonstop narrative that they've been pushing all season. She's not physical enough. She's too. She's not strong enough. She's not this. But now it's changed. Now it's no longer that because you can't say that. You can't tell me that FIBA rules are going to cause a problem for Caitlin Clark in the damn Olympics when she's play, playing around 11 superstars of the league. I'm just saying from a perspective of the league, 11 stars of this league. Whoever the hell they are. She's surrounded by stars in her league. And you think the physicality is a problem for Caitlin Clark? When the physicality is not a problem for Caitlin Clark in the WNBA right now, where she set 
record after record after record after record after record after record. How many records does Caitlin Clark have to set to prove it to imbeciles like Drea Carter? Yes, imbeciles, hypocrite imbecile, full of crap. Her narrative has changed. She wasn't physical. Now it's poli poli like what? Make up your mind. Because politics would have had Caitlin Clark on that team. Politics would have had Caitlin Clark on that team. Politics would have had Agrike Agumbawale on that team. What kept them off that team was this thunderheaded fucking committee saying we need to keep players who play together together. Despite their shortcomings. Despite their inability to compete at the level. There was a game earlier this year against when the Phoenix Mercury played Indiana where Brittany Griner went down with an injury. This was the game in which Tarasi didn't play and Kalia Cooper nearly came back from 30 down to, to, to bring them back in that game. The Indiana Fever were running the fuck out of Phoenix. They were running them off the floor. They were running them off the floor. What happened? Griner got hurt. She didn't get hurt. She got hurt for a second. Why do I know? Because she played the next game they played, which I think was a day or two later. She wasn't hurt. What happened was the coach for Phoenix saw the speed in which Indiana was playing. Brittany Griner couldn't keep up. She was getting beat down the floor every single time because she couldn't keep up. So what I'm saying about that situation is speed kills. Speed kills. It kills in all sports. It kills in football. It kills in baseball. It kills in basketball. It kills in hockey. It kills in soccer. If you, are, if you have speed, you're going to win the battles. If I push pace, you can't keep up with me. So they sat her the rest of that game due to injury. But the reality was she was just too slow to keep up. Too slow to keep up. So you want to keep this old guard, these dying dogs, Tarasi, Griner. Griner would have a reason. Griner would have an argument. The argument would be that she's 6'8". And if you have a size situation, you, maybe you want to have her on the team. But not for the pace in which Team USA should be playing at. You throw a point guard like Caitlin Clark out there. I'm playing. I'm playing track. I'm, I'm going. I'm running the four by one hundred. This is a four by one hundred track race. We're going. We're racing. I'm not walking the ball up the floor. I'm pushing pace the entire game. Look at how Indiana's game has changed since their teammates decided they're going to run. But Drea Carter will have you believe that it's politics now, even though a month ago it was physicality. She'll have you believe that it's chemistry when the chemistry of Team USA clearly is not very good since they just got the fucking tar beat out of them. But the chemistry is so great. There's been excuse after excuse after excuse, made up story after story after story to keep certain players off of this team. I will tell you right now, without a thought in my mind, without one thought in my mind, Caitlin Clark, Arike Agumbawale, Alicia Gray, those three guards should be on that team. You can take any three out. I don't care who. Angel Reese should be on that team. I don't care which pick you take out. Outside of Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson, take the rest of them out. I don't give a shit. Um, that's four right there. Dewana Bauer. Donna Bonner. Donna Bonner. Put her in there. Take anybody else out. Don't care. Ogumake. You can take anybody else out again from the bigs. You put her in there. How is Nafisia Collier going to the Olympics? She's injured. She can't play. She cannot play. She played three minutes in the All-Star game. She's injured. Are we really going to go to the Olympics? We're starting a week with an injured player who won't be able to play? What are we doing? What are we doing? I, 
my belief is that they should have run that game on Saturday with the winner going to the Olympics. And I stay, I stand by it because you know what? The best team won. And the better team is the group from the team WNBA. And listen to this type of dribble from people like Drea Carter. I can't stomach it. It just makes me fucking sick. Because she has no consistency. She doesn't stick to anything. It's a cha- She has a changing narrative on every every chance she gets. It changes the narrative. It, it, it'll, cha- it'll change next week. It'll change in three weeks. Heck, I'm, I'm sure she probably will sit here and tell you that Angel Reese is the rookie of the year, too. <laughs> Despite everything that Caitlin Clark does. But that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this lengthy rant. We're at 35, 36 minutes. Um, I hope you stuck around for the entire rant because... This one was passionate to me. This one pissed me off. I watched some videos on this. I'm just like, I can pick this crap apart. I got receipts of you. You've said other things and you're contradicting yourself now. Because if politics was why players were put in that team, then Caitlin Clark absolutely would be on that team. Absolutely. There's nothing that would put anyone else on that team in front of her. Nothing. Hey, we know what it is. An old guard of people who don't want to let go, who don't like the freaking white girl who's straight. And you have a problem with it. Just call it what it is. It'll be a whole lot easier if you tell the truth, but you won't. That's all I got. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.